Our scripture today comes to us from 1 John, the third chapter. The author writes, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself, just as he is pure. Here ends the reading for today. Well, on this All Saints Day, grace, peace, and peace to you from God our Father and Jesus the Christ. Amen. What a beautiful text to be read on All Saints Day, for in John's words, we have not only been called children of God, but most importantly, we are children of God only because of God's inexhaustible, unconditional, perfect love for us, love that has been lavished upon us, as the text read. And you have to know that in Greek, in which this was written, the verb is in the present conditional tense, which means it keeps on going. This love never ends. It never stops. It goes on forever and ever and ever, never to be withheld, never to be taken back. God's love is for all of us, it is forever, and it is here to stay. If you remember nothing else from today, please remember that. Think John 3.16, which I think most of you know. For God so loved the world that God gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's it. That's Jesus' love. It's God's humanity, his gift to humanity in a nutshell. And I believe it is by virtue of our baptisms that we are made children of God. In our baptisms, we are literally joined to Christ in his life, in his death, and in his resurrection. And so we come, we are born, and we live and die and are raised just as Christ was. We are brothers and sisters in the faith, claimed by God to be God's child forever. Last night, I baptized a beautiful little baby here. His name was Tegan Arnold Anderson. And I can tell you that being a pastor, I don't think there's anything better than cradling a baby's head in your hand, pouring that warm water on his head, saying, you are baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and then marking that baby with the sign of the cross, anointing that child in oil. Now, John goes on to say in in this particular scripture that if you are a child of God, and you all are children of God, there are a few things that you need to know. Membership has its privileges. Number one, not everyone is going to understand what it means to be a child of God because, as John says, not everybody knows God. So, expect to be misunderstood, rejected, laughed at, scorned, mocked, accused, persecuted, You name it, but take heart, stand firm. So is Jesus, and Jesus endured, and so will we. But know that that's probably going to happen at some time in your lives. Remember, too, that you don't stand alone, that God has promised to never leave you or forsake you. So we can stand firm in the faith. And secondly, John tells us that, he says, we're children of God now, But when Christ comes, we're going to be something even better, more magnificent, shining with God's grace and glory. We don't know exactly what that's going to look like, but we do know that it will be good because God is in it. And I think in our lives, God continues to perfect us, to work on us, to bring us closer to him so that our lights, our love will shine brighter so that we can be saints as those saints who have loved us, who have modeled the faith for us. And lastly, John says, because we are children of God, we are expected to act and behave as children of God, Christ-like, to love others as our Heavenly Father has loved us. And how many of you remember when you were growing up, your father or your mother, maybe your grandparents said, behave, you know who you are. We're Johnsons or Petersons or Olsons. And that means something. Remember your name. Well, God certainly knows how hard we try, doesn't he? 
I believe he does. And I think God looked down upon us and he said, oh my goodness, these people, they're having a hard time, they're struggling, they're not going to make it on their own. They need a savior. So I will go to earth, I will put on flesh, I will be their savior, I will be Jesus for them and teach them and show them the way. And then I think God said, oh gosh, when Jesus leaves the earth, they'll need someone else, they'll need my spirit who will continue to provide comfort and encouragement who will be with them when the going gets tough and let them know that they are not alone, that my spirit remains with them. And then I think God said, you know what, I think they need one more thing. I think my people need saints, other people who will live as I have taught them to live, who know what it is to be loved by God, who share God's love, and who continue to, to share that love with others to let them know they are loved, and who raise them in the faith, who tell them what it is to believe in me, to trust in me. I will make sure that my people are surrounded by plenty of saints. A little word on saints, a little trivia here. Did you know that nowhere in the Bible does the word saint refer to a person of conspicuous virtue? It doesn't happen. Paul addresses the church in Corinth as called saints, sanctified or made holy in Christ. But certainly if you go home and read 1 Corinthians, you will see that the recipients there are not poster children for moral excellence. They were sinners. We are sinners. Martin Luther said we are both saints and sinners at the same time. And indeed we know that. So I ask you, who are the saints in your lives? living or dead, who have modeled what it is to live out your baptismal callings as beloved children of God? Who is it that nurtured you in the faith? Who taught you to pray? Who extended kindness, compassion, unconditional love? Who was the one person that was always there for you when nobody else was? Who was that one person that you could always go to no matter what? Well, in my own life, and I can think of many saints who have been there for me, but one in particular stands out. Her name was Bernice. Bernice worked in my father's bakery, and she came to work for us when I was three years old, and she stayed there until I was 20. So for 17 years, Bernice and I got to know each other pretty well, particularly because Bernice and Bill, her husband, had no children of her own. So myself and my siblings became their adopted children. It was Bernice who would come up to our, our apartment on the second floor of the bakery building for lunch and then take me downstairs so I would not be alone. We'd walk down the steps together. And there were 24 steps leading from our apartment down to the bakery. So it was Bernice who taught me to go down those steps and count from 1 to 24. So by the age of 3, I knew my numbers pretty well. The unfortunate piece is that I think it stopped there, and I, either we should have had more steps or I should have paid more attention in algebra and, and geometry because my math ability is not, not great, not my strong point. But that I'll, I will never forget that. I can still feel my hand and hers leading me down those steps, doing the counting. But Bernice was also the one that just drilled me with the Baltimore Catechism. Who made you? God made me. Why did God made you, make you? God made me because God loved me, and on and on and on. Bernice was the one who was present at my first communion because my mother wasn't allowed to receive communion with me. and stand. She could stand beside me, but she couldn't receive the sacrament, all because my parents were not married in the church, because my mother was Catholic, my father was Presbyterian, and God forbid that she receive the sacrament because of such an atrocity. <sighs> It's a good thing we've come a long way since then. Bernice was my confirmation sponsor. She was the one that stood behind me and put her hand on me, making me feel strong in the faith, letting her, me know that she was there beside me and would always be. Bernice never forgot to send cards at my birth, for my birthdays, on holidays. And always inside there would be a letter of encouragement tucked in it and sometimes a dollar bill, a five dollar bill, whatever she could afford at that time. And when Bernice's husband died of suicide, Bernice stood strong in her faith 
convincing the church that a proper funeral inside that church building was indeed the right and godly thing to do, even though, boy, some of the hierarchy certainly disagreed, and they just weren't sure that Bill was worthy of being brought into the church. Imagine. All of this Bernice did purely out of love, godly love, Christ-like, unconditional love, and she was only able to do so because Bernice knew that God first loved her. And because God did first love her, that love just spilled out onto me and to many others. This past week, we buried one of Trinity's saints. Her name was Joanne Yomgren. And when I asked her family members what they would most remember about her, they all unanimously agreed that it was Joanne's profound love, her ability to love, that they would remember most. It didn't matter, they said, if Joanne had known the person for a day, a year, ten years. Her love extended to them all. She opened her heart, her hands, and welcomed that person lovingly into her life and into the life of their family. Her son-in-law, Doug, said that he had never met a family where the love just seemed to swirl around the people in it, in and out and under and round and through, and then it just bubbled up and went out into the world, wherever that happened to be. Well, it is that same spirit-filled, profound, swirling love that connects each one of us as brothers and sisters in Christ and leads us to the place where we meet Jesus in the sacrament of Holy Communion at that table. It is Jesus himself, mysteriously present in the bread and wine, who meets us, feeds us, nurtures us, and transforms us so that we can in turn go out and live as children of God, saints in the world, for the world. And I am so excited about the 15 children who will soon partake in their first communion here. May they realize the life-giving love that has been given to them and for them as children of God, young saints that they all are. I remember a pastor saying that if we could really just grasp what a great gift communion is, we would be doing cartwheels up and down the aisles as we come forward to receive it. So feel free, children. You want to do cartwheels? Go ahead. I'll understand. Then I'll know that you really get it. So today we remember and we give thanks for all of the saints that we have known. And in the remembering, in the lighting of the candles, we bring them to heart, to mind, and to soul again, recalling the love with which they shone. With us, maybe they are in a different way, but still they are with us just as Jesus has been and will be with us now and forever. So back to Bernice. You have to know that Bernice was a warrior. She loved me beyond measure, but she worried about me for I don't know what a reason. She just did. That was just her nature. But she did so out of love. Especially, she was concerned about me when I became a single mother with three children to raise. Two. One was off to college. And so she would write me letters, and she would let me know that. So when I told her that I was called here as a pastor and I would begin serving here on May 1st, almost going on three years ago, She wrote back, and she was so excited and relieved and happy for me that I would now be serving in a call. The day that I was installed here, I went home and received a phone call that Bernice had died. I think she knew it was okay. It was time to let go. She could stop worrying. I would be okay, and she would be with God, our Heavenly Father. Each one of you has beautiful saint stories in your lives, I know. Share them. Tell the stories. And may God bless each and one of you here today as you go out in the world and are children of God shining with God's light and are saints to one another. Amen.